Uh, my speech uh, will be oriented towards uh, how has Scriptforge been implemented and not about functionalities, of much less about functionalities. Um, last year, the, I used the same first uh, cover page uh, as this year, except that the Python word was between square brackets. So Python was announced, and this year the brackets have been removed, and my speech will be uh, mostly about the implementation of the Python interface towards the Scriptforge API. Scriptforge is a set of 21 services, each having a collection of methods and properties, as you heard already, for a total of above uh, 400 methods and properties. The total number of lines of code is in 7.2 plus minus uh, 33,000 of hopefully uh, well written and readable uh, logs. The services here are presented uh, in functional categories. The first one is uh, about enhancement of the basic language. Um, a number of things that we have in Python we do not have in, in, uh, in basic. And those services are not or only partially available in Python. The second category about documents uh, is manipulation of documents and manipulation of data, especially in CALAC and BASE documents. Then about user interfaces, mainly by using basic dialogues, only basic dialogues, but available from Python as well, and forms stored in draw pages. Supported forms may reside in base, calc, or writer documents. Also utilities about a number of things, uh, for instance, uh, about uh, what is the actual running environment, or about translation using portable object formats. The basic service in utilities is, it's a paradox, only available from Python. I do not want to give more details here about the content of the services. Everything is available in the standard help pages, at least in English. So you have there the URL, just go to there and read. Now in 7.2, um, technically each service is stored in a separate module. Modules are gathered in libraries, one core library, Scriptforge, and a number of associated libraries. Only Scriptforge needs to be loaded by the user. Uh, the number of libraries uh, may evolve with the time. So we can have more libraries in the future. It's uh, quite easy to do. Services with an asterisk have been improved and with a double asterisk have been significantly improved in 7.2 versus 7.1. And uh, services in red are new in 7.2. You have here the elements that are stored in the LibreOffice repository. Uh, below, additionally, uh, you have there a number of elements that are available in our, let's say, private GitLab uh, repository. In particular, there exists a test suite. Uh, it is implemented both in BASIC and in Python but it is not integrated today into the LibreOffice repository. The targets of the project, uh, why have we built a new library of scripts? Well, first of all, with a few exceptions that we will see, propose the same API, both in BASIC and Python. So the end user should not be aware when he's executing either basic or Python script, he should have the same user interface also for errors or uh, several boxes, whatever. 
you know, you know knowledge is not necessary. However, some properties uh, return anyway a you know object and as such facilitate the access to you know instances. The API is inspired by uh, Microsoft extensions to VBA, also by uh, a huge number of Python built-in functions, also other uh, PHP and other IDs that we had. Uh, also by a pre-existing library known as the Basic Primitives that was designed by Jean-François Nifnecker. So in the beginning, we uh, had the question, should we implement the API in BASIC or in Python? Uh, there were a number of prerequisites uh, to decide what we should do. We wanted an uh, object-oriented API. BASIC is obviously weak in that matter. Uh, we cannot have uh, inheritance in basic, in basic, and we have a constraint that uh, a basic object should be created inside the library. Afterwards, it can, however, be used anywhere. We need persistent, persistent memory. Why is that? Well, scripts are not only executed in batch. Uh, they are also uh, they are, execu are often executed in start-stop mode. It uh, just think to uh, events, so scripts are executed intermittently. Also, to store, let's say, error messages in the user's language, or to store a log of debug info, or to keep a list of services that are available somewhere, we needed persistent memory. Basic as a good solution for that, with global variables that last uh, as long as the Hello session last, and uh, we had a lag there to use easily that kind of things in Python. And we needed namespaces because when we make an API with a huge number of functions, we must be able to segment the names, and uh, basic is very bad in that matter. So, in the first step, we were very embarrassed. We could not make the choice, and we had here a number of reflections about namespaces in BASIC. Well, to, uh, to be able to define completely a function, we need to qualify it with global scope. For instance, uh, the library name, module, function. This is the full qualifi qualification that is minimal to prevent completely collisions. But uh, this is also not known, probably. Well, it's quite easy to define a module as a basic object. And you can assign a module to a variable, and you can reassign it. And from that variable, you can call a function, like you see here. So we revised our judgment and we decided to make the API mainly in BASIC. Okay, ScriptForge is said service-oriented. What does it mean exactly? Well, everything starts from the already described create script service function. In basic or Python, same syntax. An object is returned. On that object, apply methods and properties. So writing user scripts is very easy. You have here comparison of uh, copy file, delete folder uh, methods on the same file system uh, service that is proposed in the API. Create script service returns either a real basic or Python object referring to a module or it returns a basic class instance. In that case, arguments can be passed in the create script service uh, method itself. 
So what happens behind the scenes? I don't want here to, to, to give details. You can read it on your own if you want later. The idea is uh, that um, we defined, in fact, a framework making the addition of a new service very straightforward. And that's important to understand. So adding a new library, new service is really easy. OK, now uh, the syntax uh, must be identical, but there are also other things to consider when we compare the implementation basic and Python. So first of all, we need an identical programming interface so that the user is not aware of executing a basic or a Python script. To call a method from one world to the other one, we use the script provider mechanism, and we must be able to do that in both directions. There were a number of uh, limitations in that mechanism. Not all data types are processed equally. Uh, critical are dates, because uh, any language or any uh, database or calc and so on, and so on every uh, application has its own internal represent representation of dates, and that's, uh, that's uh, an issue. Also, native objects cannot be transferred from one world to the other. Uh, you cannot transfer a basic object to Python, and you cannot transfer a Python object to basic. So we had to define to define a protocol. The protocol is not very complex, but it has to handle a number of things like data types. Example, <clears throat> all dates are transferred both for the arguments or for the return value as, as uh, you know date time data types. Are the interfaces seen from the user scripts really identical or are they similar? Uh, example, uh, basic is fully case insensitive. Is that managed? Well, just the question that we had. Well, if you look at uh, the code that is here, quite easy. Well, in Python, you just have to import the create script service function from a module that is shipped with hello called scriptforge.py. We uh, create uh, an instance of the database service, and we store that in variable A. That opens the database uh, that you probably know as bibliography. And we want to have uh, the execution of a, of a select statement to store as an array, or the tuple of tuples, in fact, in B, the rows contained as a result of that SQL statement. What do you have in scriptforge.py? Well, py, sorry. Well, quite easy. Uh, create script service is here a function uh, at the bottom of the module. You have the SF database class and a few, really a few definitions of the service. The implementation is done in the basic world. The properties are listed in a dictionary, and the item part is just a Boolean value indicating whether the, the property is editable or not. Where is is a property, and it is not editable. And you have then the method getRows with its arguments and its default values. And getRows executes just a standard exact method with a number of parameters, and uh, we will see what this gives. In fact, the SF database class is a subclass of SF services, and there is the magic. In fact, you have there a, a, a number of uh, quite tricky uh, internal uh, methods, the, the double underscore methods, init, get attribute, and set attribute are not that easy. 
but for instance, the uh, care for having uh, uh, a certain freedom about property names, method names, and uh, arguments. So you can use lowercase, proper case, or camel case, whatever you want or, or you prefer. Common error handling, you saw probably that the SQL statement given as argument of get shows is wrong. Well, in both cases, you call that from basically, you call that from Python, you get the same error message. You see, by the way, how user-friendly the error messages are. And um, we have we had already in basic a limitation. It was impossible for scriptfaults to report the line number of the code line that raised the error. Uh, that's why we define in the protocol when uh, basic reports an error. Well, Python processes that error and uh, the exception end of Python displays the full stack of lines of code which played a role in the error and one of them it's uh, here line 27 in uh, module testsf.py uh, can be listed so with Python we have more information when uh, the scripts uh, go wrong. The counterpart of the in the protocol uh, at the basic side is implemented in a Python dispatcher function. And that function, uh, well, is quite simple. It processes the input arguments, for instance, dates, call the correct property or method and return what must be, what must be returned, also after en enrichment. I mean uh, here that, uh, for instance, uh, the return values are, of course, the value itself, but uh, eventually also the var type of uh, uh, the, the return value and also other things. This makes a reinterpretation of the return values at the Python, at the Python side possible if necessary. So we use internally basic objects. And in fact, at the Python side, the object reference, sorry, is the entry of the basic object in an object's cache that is stored in a persistent memory. For debugging, we use in both environments a function called debugprint. It's similar to debug.print in VBA, but we could not make a debug service because print is a reserved word, both in Python and in basic. So we use here debugprint uh, that we can call from both environments. It's uh, a part of the exception service. What does debug print? Well, it uh, stores uh, and logs records in the persistence, persistent memory, and those uh, records, uh, that those logged records, can be displayed in a model or a non-model, so-called console. Well, what is specific here? Python and Basic share the same console. This is an example. If we have uh, a piece of code written in Python and another one written in BASIC, they are identical, but one script is triggered when mouse hovers one dialog console and the other uh, script is uh, triggered when the mouse hovers the, another console, both write in the console. Well, you reach this, you can have a mix of messages or debug traces. Where the origin is in basic or in Python, you can mix them uh, smoothly in the same 
Scriptforge console. An alternative to this is to, is to use a Python shell console. It requires that the AppSo extension is installed. This is uh, AppSo is for alternative script organizer for Python. You can run immediate statements, including statements that uh, call uh, uh, ScriptForge API uh, methods. And you can call from basic. In, in, you have then all the, pipe, the print statements that you have in your Python code uh, will be issued in the Python shell console. And you can have from basic a specific Python print method that we write in the same console here. Jean-Pierre, just yes. a quick notice, five minutes left. OK, well, um, uh, a bit a bit uh, faster then. OK, we have also helpers that we defined for uh, both environments. Here, a number of functions. An example here is string. You can hash a string, but it's done thanks to the import of hashlib in a specific script for helper.py uh, module. And you can have also a number of basic functions that are made available to Python. The, the example of message box was already seen with uh, Raphael uh, before. But the number of uh, basic functions that are implemented to be called also from Python is uh, larger than that. Uh, because the those functions are most of, for most of them, well known and quite easy to use. Everything is uh, in the documentation. Uh, there is also a special page about how to script in Python for ScriptForge. Um, what will be new in the future, I wanted to stress that also, well, here uh, we will have a new chart service with uh, a scenario here. Uh, the scenario is that we extract data from a database. We copy what we extracted from the database in a calc. Uh, document the card document is hidden and so it's uh, hap everything happens in the background we design and customize a chart we export it sorry we export it to a file and the file can be displayed with a few lines you see uh, in uh, 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 image control of a dialogue What we also plan for the future, uh, the first four items are already in master. Um, also outputs, output documents of export documents to PDF and to printers with a number of options. We will have automatic translation of everything what is fixed content in a dialogue uh, into the native language of the user. We will have table consoles in dialogues. The other IDs that we have are already specified, and there exist uh, uh, prototypes of them, but they are not yet developed as such, and on, not yet in the in the in master or in any repository. We think to have uh, SF widgets library with especially uh, pop-up menu service, a functionality that is often requested in forums. Uh, we would like to have a number service about roundings, unit conversions. Uh, uh, it's uh, sp uh, especially uh, designed for uh, managing double uh, variables. And also a region service to know, for instance, what time it is in Tokyo when it is 12 o'clock in Brussels or on the Green Greenwich Meridian. And to have a UTC no function, for instance. Okay. Um, the end was a bit faster, but I think I'm still in time. 
if I you are, clock you now. are Jean okay Pierre, thank, thank you, you. <laughs> thank you okay, very okay. much for this clear and great talk uh, very great to see this work on script forge I think uh, as I'm a Python programmer by myself it's uh, really really um, nice to see that this is shipped with uh, 7.1 and 7.2 and as you mentioned for the for the further versions thank you very much